I'm Robert Martinez, State Historian of New Mexico, and this is New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. El día de San Lorenzo fue un día muy poderoso. That's a line from an indita about cautivas in New Mexico in the 1800s, but it's very descriptive of what happened uh, around the uh, day of St. Lawrence, August 11th, in 1680, when the Pueblos united to drive the Spanish out. Before the American Revolution of 1776, before the French Revolution of 1789, New Mexico had a revolution in 1680. The Pueblos had had enough of Spanish economic systems, Spanish political systems, and Spanish religious systems, and decided that's enough. Um, so this happens in history, okay? Um, I want to talk a little bit about that because revolutions, riots, revolts, they happen when people are tired of being oppressed, when they get tired of injustice, and they get tired of not being heard. Um, New Mexico in the 1600s was a very unhealthy colony of Spain. There was a lot of friction between priests on the one hand and governors on the other, and the Pueblo people and the Hispanic colonists were caught in the middle. Um, Fray Esteban de Perea, uh, around 1630, he um, had some very uh, unkind things to say about New Mexico. He looked down on the local Hispanic population, uh, seeing our ancestors as immoral and uh, superstitious and not very good Catholics. Um, and he also looked down on the Pueblo people who he saw as uh, being a bad influence on the Hispanic people. And you see this back and forth, priests writing that they don't like the Hispanic people because they think they're a bad influence on the Pueblo people. Governors would come and say unpleasant things about the local Hispanics. Uh, Governor uh, Bernardo uh, Lopez de Mendizabal, when he was put on trial by the Inquisition, called uh, uh, Hernan Martin and his brother Luis Martin mestizos and indios and buffons, uh, buffoons. Um, this is going on and it's a, a problem. You also have people moving up here uh, bringing other surnames like uh, uh, Lucero de Godoy uh, in the 1620s, uh, Garcia de Noriega, uh, Trujillo, they're all from Mexico City and Zacatecas, Hurtado. They're coming about a generation after the Oñate colonists and they're contributing to uh, the uh, mixing of cultures. We have a lot of Inquisition documents uh, dealing with witchcraft and uh, sorcery, brujeria and hechiceria, love magic, and most of the people who are uh, involved are Spanish or mixed blood, mestizos, mulatos, the Garcia Olgado family are described as Africans and mulatos. Uh, these people are are back and forth. There's a lot of gossip. There's a lot of superstition, a lot of affairs going on. So it's quite an exciting place. But what you see happen when the Pueblos revolt, um, they unite under one leader, Pope. Uh, and you can imagine these runners, these Pueblo runners, crisscrossing the mesas uh, along the, the Rio Grande, uh, going from Pueblo to Pueblo with their quipu, a little... Uh, rope uh, like with knots on it, kind of like a rosary, um, counting the days down to the revolt. Not all the Pueblos uh, were on board. Uh, some of them uh, might have informed the governor at the time, uh, Antonio de Otermin, that there was going to be a revolt and it was going to be violent, but it was too late. Um, by the time uh, all is said and done, Pueblo warriors fall on men, women, and children, killing m hundreds of them, uh, killing priests, uh, desecrating churches, burning them. And one of the uh, difficult things for historians is all or most of the civil and church documents uh, dealing with New Mexico were destroyed. That's why we don't have uh, very many uh, church documents, marriages, baptisms. We don't have wills. We don't have all those uh, amazing pieces of paper with writing on them that would have really fleshed out 
what New Mexico's uh, Hispanic and Pueblo uh, communities were like between the years 1598 and 1680. So we have to rely on bits and pieces uh, that have survived or on uh, uh, testimonies uh, that uh, st are still with us in other archives in places like Juarez, Mexico, uh, Paral, uh, Mexico, Chihuahua, and of course, Mexico City. So what do we have going on here? Uh, the Spanish are expelled. Let's for a moment stop thinking about Pueblo Indians and Spanish people. Um, the fact is there was a lot of back and forth. Uh, uh, Jose Antonio Esquivel has written extensively about um, different members of Hispanic families who were part Puebloan, who were translators, who were culture brokers, and it went the other direction too. Pueblo families who were heavily involved at every level with Hispanic families. So in a way, uh, this Pueblo revolt was almost like a family argument, uh, very violent. But nonetheless, uh, these people were uh, closely related, intimately connected. So by the time the, the um, revolt happens and they are all um, hiding uh, in Santa Fe, the survivors, uh, whoever could make it to Santa Fe went there uh, to be with the governor and the soldiers that were there. Um, and uh, the other colonists that were living in Santa Fe, they, they had to um, barricade themselves uh, around the Casas Reales, what we now call the Palace of the Governors. And uh, the Pueblos were smart. They knew what they were doing. Um, they surrounded Santa Fe and they cut off the water supply. Ultimately, uh, these folks had to surrender. Um, to their credit, the Pueblo warriors allowed the surviving colonists, uh, Governor Otermin, and soldiers to leave Santa Fe and head south. They headed south. They, they had to witness and see uh, bodies of men, women, and children uh, thrown on the ground uh, and uh, churches burnt. Uh, by the time they got to what's now the area of Albuquerque, there was no Albuquerque yet, but you did have Estancias ranches, uh, the Garcia, the Noriega ranch, and the Trujillo ranch. Um, these colonists uh, in this area meet up with Otermin and they head south. Uh, the Pueblo of Isleta did not participate in the Pueblo uh, revolt. So this was a, a way for these folks to leave. Um, they had to get down to uh, what we call today Juarez, Guadalupe del Paso. That was a mission established in 16. 59. And we need to remember that was part of New Mexico from 1659 until the mid-1820s. It's not until the Mexican period that uh, that area becomes uh, Mexico, separate from New Mexico. So that's New Mexico. And what happens is um, here in New Mexico, uh, the Pueblos clearly um, must have been very happy uh, to have been victorious over the Spanish. Uh, the, the Spanish seemed uh, incredibly formidable and it seemed uh, impossible that uh, indigenous people could rise up and defeat the Spanish. But they did this. And Pope actually started what we could call the first ever movement to decolonize. You've heard that term recently, decolonizing your diet, decolonizing your culture. Well, he started that. He and the, uh, the victorious Puebloans said, let's uh, stop being Spanish. So we have to remember the Hispanic people who, who were refugees heading south, we have documents. They, they wrote down everyone. They described the men, women, and children. And, uh, uh, they, they described them having long, thick black hair, round faces, flat noses. These are the Hispanic people. So clearly there had been some intermixing. And some were described as light-haired and light-eyed. So that's what happens when uh, these folks are mixing. But the Pueblo people have also changed. They are also... Uh, people who have lived under Spanish rule for three generations. So Pope says, that's it. We're no longer Spanish. We're going back to our Pueblo way ways. He, he doesn't say it in English. Um, he might have said it in Spanish so everyone could understand. Um, 
We don't know. I don't know. But we know that he communicated to them by telling them, we're no longer Catholic. You're no longer Catholic. If you were married by a priest, you are no longer a Catholic couple. Separate and go with someone else. Um, you're going to be a, a Pueblo cult couple now. And if you were baptized, go to the river, wash off your baptism, and now we're going to be Puebloan and go back to pre-contact, pre-Spanish ways. Well, easier said than done. Uh, next time I'll talk about what happened in the Pueblo world from 1680 to uh, 1692 and what was happening to those refugees, those Spanish colonists who were driven out. What happened to them? Where'd they go? And we'll see what their fate turns out to be. Hasta pronto. Until next time.